Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we'll look at tax treaties, which is a topic covered in international accounting and or taxation course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube, as you would, you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. Also, I have my website. On my website, I have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice questions, 2,000 plus CPA, CPA questions. If you are looking to study with another individual, I suggest you, you check out studypal.co. They are available in 85 countries and 2,800 cities. It's an artificial intelligence driven by the study buddy platform that match you with a CPA or a CFA or whatever exam you are studying for. Tax treaty. First, let's start up talk about what is a tax treaty. Well, tax treaty is basically a bilateral agreement between two countries regarding how companies and individuals from one country will be taxed when they earn income in their other country. Simply put, it's how are we going to tax each other? How are, how are you going to tax my citizen or my residents? And how am I going to tax your citizens and resident? And what I mean by citizen, including corporation. So what is the purpose of a tax treaty? Well, it's to facilitate, to make it easier for countries and individuals and companies to participate in international trade and investment. And one way to do so is reduce the tax barrier, makes the tax barrier easier for companies and individuals so the goods will flow from one country into the other. Because as we saw in the prior session, one major problem of international trade and investment is the double taxation. And double taxation, basically, you get taxed twice on the same income, either in your home country or in the host country or in both at the same time. Okay, and both at the same time or sometimes through a third party. Also, what uh, tax treaties provide is the possibility of reducing withholding taxes. And we talked about withholding rates in the prior chapter. If you if you reduce my withholding rate, I'm more likely to, to invest in your in your country because I can get m money more than if you have a higher withholding. Okay, but you have to keep in mind treaties require the exchange of information between countries to help in enforcing their domestic tax provision. So simply put, if you are two countries are going into a treaty with each other, they should be in a sense friendly and open because the enforcement mechanism has to be there for the treaty to work. So there's a lot of political um, political consideration uh, factored into the tax treaty. Now, there are many tax treaties around the world. One model, we call it the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD model, and most most income taxes treaties signed by the major industrial countries, which is the right here, the o OECD countries, they follow this model. They follow this OECD model. An important aspect of this model, an important article, is a, a treat indicate uh, an important article in this model. Treaty indicate that a business profit may be taxed by a treaty partner country only if they are attributable to a permanent establishment. So simply put, they say, I'm only going to tax you if you have a permanent establishment in my country. That's that's how I'm going to be taxing you. Now, now let's talk about what do they mean by permanent establishment. That could include an office, a branch, a factory, construction site, mine, well, or quarry. It does not include um, facilities for storage, display, delivery, and maintenance of goods solely for processing by another enterprise does not constitute permanent establishment. So basically, they define what do they mean by permanent establishment. So I'm going to tax you if you have what's considered permanent establishment. And those are the most industrial countries. Now, again, not everyone follow this OECD to, um, uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to the letter, but that's what they use when they start the negotiation. Okay, If there is no permanent establishment, then the income is not taxed in that country. Simply put, if you don't have a permanent establishment, generally speaking, I am not going to tax you. Okay. More about the OECD uh, model. Uh, one of the most important aspect of this model is the reduction in withholding rate, which is good. So I'm going to give you a list of the uh, reduction, which is you don't have to know, just FYI. For example, the model is 5% for direct investment and dividend. Uh, paid by subsidiaries to the parent, withholding 15% for portfolio dividend paid to individual, 10% interest on interest, and 0% on royalties. So notice, the OEC model may be a starting point for negotiation. It doesn't have to be. Now, generally speaking, you would assume that countries with more outbound investment than inbound, so if a country invests more in other countries, so their corporation is like they have a lot of multinational corporation, they would always try to reduce the host country's right to tax. Okay, simply put, you know, uh, 
seek and zero withholding on interest. Basically, they don't want you to, to withhold anything because when they want to get their money out, because they are investing, they want to get all of their money 100%. So this is the OECD model. Some countries follow it. We have also the UN model. Um, the OEC model assumed that countries are economic, economically equal because they're all developed countries. The UN model treat um, the countries differently. We have the developed and the developing countries. Basically, the developed are part of the OECD because they're well established and developed and they have a strong economy. But the UN assumes there is an imbalance between the developed and the developing countries. So the UN model recognized that the host country, often a developing country, were you are running your business should have more tax and right when profit repatriation when profit is repatriated to the mother country or to the parent company simply put they try to give more power to the developing countries so this way they can collect more taxes this way they can develop themselves that's the whole that's the whole assumption behind this now the us we also have our own model um we have our own model when we negotiate tax uh, tax agreement, bilateral tax agreement. The U.S. model exempt interest and royalties from withholding and establishes a 15% maximum for withholding on dividend. Now, it doesn't have to be this is the max. For some countries, we may have more, but generally speaking. And the U.S. has treaties with more than 50 countries. Of course, the EU, Australia, New Zealand, Ukraine, Russia, Egypt and Israel, Mexico, Canada, India, so on and so forth. And this is a list of the different rate. For example, if you notice here for the Philippine, you know, the pay, uh, dividend paid on withholding is 20%. Now, if there is no treaty, there is the no treaty. So if you have no treaty with, with, with a particular country, we would held 30%. For example, notice with Canada, zero paid um, interest paid on in, interest paid to parent, royalty paid to parent, zero and only 5% on dividend. Basically, Canada is very close to us. Uh, Germany, same deal. So those are good deals. Those are good deals. Just to give you an idea, what what you know what different treaties what different treaties are now um also as far as south america as of 2018 except for brazil so brazil that's the only country that we don't have a tax treaty with all the other countries including believe it or not venezuela which is misspelled we have a treaty with venezuela as well now now one explanation why the u.s doesn't have treaty in brazil is there is little brazilian investment in the u.s so the the brazilian government they have no incentive to have a treaty because they don't invest in the u.s if anything the u.s invests in brazil and they want to have money uh, uh, less money flown out of brazil so it's the opposite so the reduction the reduction in withholding taxes would result from a tax treaty would mostly set a benefit the u.s individual and companies who receive interest and dividend from their brazilian investment therefore the brazilian has a little incentive okay so the brazilian government is not interested because they don't they're not going to get the same benefit now Having said so, if we compare Brazil to Poland, Poland don't have a lot of business investment in the U.S., but Poland, we do have a tax treaty with Poland because they have a different motive, okay? So there's also very little Polish investment in the U.S. However, Poland differ from Brazil is they're interested in attracting U.S. investments. They want the U.S. investments. Therefore, they want to make it as easy as possible, okay? So the U.S.-Poland tax treaty allows Poland to better compete in other countries in that region by attracting U.S. investments, okay? And... Uh, Understanding the potential of to be derived from a tax treaty is very important. So it's very important you have a tax treaty. Why? For example, let's assume $100 in dividend paid by a subsidiary in Japan. Okay, 95 would be received by the U.S. parent company after the Japanese withhold 5%. So if you invest in Japan, you, you, if you're going to take $100, send it to the parent company, the parent company would receive 95. We have a tax treaty. Let's assume the same thing with Taiwan. We have in Taiwan. If you're going to send $100, the parent company in the U.S. would receive $80. Simply put, everything else is equal. You know, we the U.S. company will prefer to open in Japan. And that's why, that's why having a tax treaty gives you an advantage in a sense. Now, let's talk about something called tre treaty shopping, which is not as common as before. But let's just cover it in case you run through the, you read it somewhere or... It's required. So what is treaty shopping? Treaty shopping describes a process in which a resident of country A uses a corporation in country B to get the benefit of country B's treaty with country C. Simple example, let's go back to the Brazilian. Assume that a Brazilian taxpayer has an investment in the US, US dollar. Because the US has no treaty with Brazil, dividend payment to the Brazilian investor are taxed or the U.S. government would withheld 30%. So simply put, if they pay you $100, the Brazilian investor would receive $30. So the Brazilian invest in the U.S., they would receive $100 of dividend, 
the government takes 30 the Brazilian investor get $70 now what is a tax treaty here's how the tax treaty work so here's what the Brazilian investor would do and this was very common up until the late uh, 80s not, um, until 1988 well between the US and an island called the Netherlands Antilles the NA it's it's right in the Caribbean Sea right here in the Caribbean Sea you know of, of the events well in shore okay so what happened so what, what 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 investors used to do especially brazilian investors they will the brazilian taxpayer would use this treaty to their advantage and what they would do they will open they will establish a subsidiary in the northern Antilles. they will establish a subsidiary and the subsidiary will buy the stocks on their behalf now when when let's assume they bought ibm stocks or apple and apple or ibm paid dividend well the u.s government since they have a treaty with the uh, with the Netherlands Antilles, they will the, the 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 holy subsidiary, the Brazilian holy subsidiary, would receive ninety percent. Now, what happened is now this money is then transferred to the Brazilian investor. So basically, this is what uh, treaty shopping is. Okay, so and especially if there's if there's a treaty between the Netherlands Antilles and the Brazil, which is they'll get the remaining eighty percent. So this way they will um, this way the Brazilian investment will be able to keep an additional 20% because remember no treaty the Brazilian would receive $70 if they go through the entails they're gonna only get $10 or 10% off they will get $90 which is 20% more so simply put it would look something like this the Brazilian investor set a holding set a holding company in that island and they that company now invest in the US the company in the US paid a hundred dollar we only deduct ten dollars and ninety dollars goes to the to the uh, to the holding company then the holding company will pay the ninety dollars there's no income tax withholding between Brazil and the Netherland Antilles now I'm assuming you know what happened now <laughs> um, well there we go uh, it's it's not about President Trump but obviously President Trump is trying to crack down on treaties like this but the point is since the late 1980s the US government has been trying to limit the benefit for these provisions because they're aware of them they're aware of them now m most most of the time when the US negotiate they want to make sure that that certain treaty benefit are not available 50% or more of the corporation is held by a third party unless those stocks are publicly traded simply put if we have an agreement with country B well guess what country B benefit if if someone if, if another individual or another corporation owned 50% more by some by someone other than country B then they don't benefit okay the insertion of such limitation uh, would preclude the Brazilian investors from enjoying the reduced withholding rate paid by US companies okay in addition to entering new treaties the US has attempted to renegotiate its existing treaties with tax haven countries we talked about the tax haven countries to include the limitation on these uh, benefit provisions okay and in some cases when the US failed to renegotiate they simply cancel the agreement just this is true about the Netherland Antilles Island which is you know what we're not interested okay so the United States no longer have double taxation treaty with with this island now keep in mind this is tax treaties are an ongoing process follow the news and with, with President Trump in office I don't know for the next at least another year year and a half and who knows maybe four years after I can predict the future this topic will be very very interested but at least now you have an idea the purpose of the tax treaty why do we have a tax treaty what are the benefit for the host country for the parent company and if you have any questions email me if you need additional uh, lectures about related topics please visit my website where you can download the powerpoint as well as multiple choice questions notes and cpa questions and consider subscribing it's an investment in your career good luck